Welcome to part five of the Gus animation tutorial. Hopefully we'll have Gus walking in just a few minutes. First, let's try and fix a few problems. Uh, if I were to rotate the head bone, look what happens, it leaves the face behind. That's not a good thing. So we need to get that solved. Let's switch to object mode. We're gonna select the facial features, hold down the shift key so we can multi-select. We'll get the nose, we'll get eyes, uh, the buttons, the mouth. And then the last thing we'll do is select, uh, we'll select the actual uh, bone structure. But let's say by mistake, we'd actually selected the, the, the main body. We need to unselect that now, just double click on it, or what single click on it, I guess. It looks like that's what did it. And then click and select the armature, the skeleton. I can lift, uh, lift off the shift key now, and you notice it's a lighter yellow color. Just a reminder that that means that that's the object that will become the parent when we press Control P to parent. So we want to do, as we did before, uh, armature to form with automatic weights. Click that button, and now let's go to pose mode. And if we rotate, yeah, we can see things are moving quite nicely. And that's what we want. Okay, uh, let's solve one other little problem here, actually. We're going to get out of pose mode. Well, let's just switch to shading. And if we switch to shading and we select the skin, first thing I notice is that I'm not really happy with that uh, material. I don't like the name either, so I'm going to go in and change that to skin. See, not skiin, just skin. And then what I'm going to do is go over here to the material button, and I'm going to change two settings here. I'm going to drop the specular down. It looks too plasticky, and if we drop spec specular, you can notice that it starts to look a little more like leather almost. Uh, we can also bring up the roughness a little bit, and that kind of gives us a more uh, a texture that's more like baked uh, ginger. At least I think it does anyway. Uh, let's just quickly name the other things. Actually, I want to change this chocolate color, color as well too. So we're going to call this chocolate. No, that's not quite right. And what I'll do is click on the color and just darken it down a fair bit. So we'll go for like a dark chocolate color. I just want it to stand out a little bit more, a little better contrast with the skin. And we should maybe name these as well too. Red. Green and finally blue. Okay, that's uh, solved a couple of the issues that we had. Uh, we've named the colors. We've changed the chocolate. Uh, we fixed the skin. Uh, we should we should have named the bones. We didn't do that when we made the object. If you make a more complex skeleton, especially if you have fingers, you're gonna have so many bones or toes. You're gonna definitely want to name those bones as you go. So that's something that we really should have done here. Okay, we're gonna flip over to animation mode now. We'll switch this to front view. And we've already checked this, but I will just confirm from both sides that the, uh, that the mesh is deforming more or less properly, and it looks good to me. So I'm going to just place uh, the 3D cursor down here as a marker. So shift and right click. Okay, let's see. Yeah, shift, right click. That's where we want the 3D cursor to be. And we'll just start deforming one bone at a time here initially. It's a bit of a painstaking process, but that's okay. Uh, you'll see that there are much faster ways to, to do this later on. But let's just start with the basics and get used to uh, the old-fashioned way of, of animation. Okay, another thing you might notice is as we're deforming the meshes, or as we're, we're moving the bones, which deforms the meshes, like look at that shoulder. It's not really behaving the way we want it to behave. Uh, that's because we did miss a step, and it's called weight painting. It's something you can look up if you want to improve the mesh deformation as you move the bones. I'd strongly recommend that. I'm not going to be getting into it in this tutorial. We're just going to go with the automatic weights. And uh, uh, weight painting is something that you should investigate. Okay, so I'm going to select the right leg. Go to side view. I'm going to move that leg forward. And we're going to drop this down. Actually, I'm not going to do that quite yet. Let's just undo those. Glad I remembered this. We're going to hit the A key to select all bones. We're on frame one, and with all bones selected, we'll insert a key for location. To insert a key, it's the I key. Location, rotation, and scale. So if we change any of those features, uh, we've just stored keys for a lot of, for all the bones for location, rotation, and scale. We're gonna do a 40 frame animation, and with 40 frames, we want that last frame to also store this information. So we'll do that as well. Now on your walk cycle, your right or left leg goes forward first, then you return to this sort of base mode, and then your left leg goes forward. So our middle frame should also uh, most likely reflect this same pose. 
The only problem we have, and we probably should have taken this into account actually, is that 40th frame is going to be two steps away. So why don't we just move what we think will be two steps away. We'll just grab this bone and we can actually, uh, let's see here. Yeah, let's just, we'll G, and we use the Y key, so we're only moving the Y plane, and we're just guessing where we think two steps will be. Hit the A key, uh, insert a key, I key for location, rotation, and scale. And now we'll go to that middle frame, the 20th frame, and look at that, it's pretty close. It's already about halfway, uh, so we don't really have to do anything else there. Okay, now we gotta get some steps. Actually, no, but let's insert a key there anyway for location, rotation, and scale. And now we'll go back to uh, the middle, uh, to frame 10. And this is where we're gonna start to really get things moving. So we'll go to that uh, front view. I wanna make sure I select the right upper leg. Side view, we're gonna rotate. Rotate, rotate. And if we're lucky, we're not gonna be lucky. That's okay though. That position should be in just the right spot. So we didn't quite guess right, but that's okay. I'm gonna use the G key and place the toe where we use that 3D marker to show where that step was. I might have to actually move it forward slightly. This isn't gonna be a perfect walk cycle, just for the record, uh, we're just starting out here. Right leg is forward, which means the left arm should be forward. Back to side view, we've got the left upper arm selected, we'll rotate, rotate the forearm like that. Uh, back to front, one key for front, three key for side. Rotate the arm back, rotate the elbow down a bit. Hit the I key, or sorry, A key for all bones selected. Insert a key for location, rotation, scale. So we should hopefully have the first ones going. There we go, we got the first step cycle done. It's not bad, it's not terrible. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put the 3D cursor here. Do we want it there? No, actually it doesn't really matter. We don't need to worry about that because we are moving each time, so we should be okay. Let's go to uh, the middle frame, and we started with the left leg. So now we're gonna move, or the right leg, sorry. Now we're gonna move the left leg forward. Side view, left leg, rotate. Rotate the lower leg. Uh, we're, we are gonna want that cursor back here because now what we need to do is shift, left click, so we know the position of that leg. I'm gonna rotate this one back, rotate the lower leg. And now we're gonna position it like this, right here. Okay, I'm gonna shift middle mouse and just slide everything back a little bit. We need to do the arms as well too. You can see we've got uh, the right leg is forward. So the, the, sorry, the left leg is forward. So right arm must also move forward. And this is gonna be easy. We've already got that one. We, yeah, we can select that one easily. The left arm and that's gonna rotate backwards. Drop the elbow down a little bit. Hit the A key for all bones, insert a key for location, rotation, and scale. And let's see if we've got a walk cycle, okay. So there, that's not bad, and there. Uh, it looks like he's sliding a little bit, and then here. So we do need to do some work with positioning, but that's okay. Let's just do one at a time. So here, stepping forward, that looks fine. Now let's put the 3D cursor here. So that's shift, right click. And now we want that foot to stay planted there as the other foot moves forward. And you can see it went too far already. So we'll grab, bring back to this point, insert a key for location, rotation, scale. And we need the back foot to stay all the way back here. Look how far forward it went. I'm gonna grab again. Insert a key for location, rotation, scale. Okay, so that's not bad, forward. And then it slides a bit, a little bit too much. I'm just gonna grab everything and move it forward a bit. Hit the A key, insert key, location, rotation, scale. And then find the last step. Oh, okay, so now with this foot planted, we should shift, right click, and we want that foot to stay there and look how far forward it went, that's okay. I'll grab here, hit the A key, insert a key for location, rotation, and scale. And that should be reasonably close. Yeah, that's not too bad. Okay, 
what we've done or what we have right now is a walk cycle, but it's only a single walk cycle. What if we want our character to uh, to walk multiple steps, more than two steps? Well, we don't want to keep animating like this. It's going to take forever. So the quick and easy way is we can actually close all this down and we just need to work with this set of bones. But I want to just highlight one point. The resting position where Gus starts and where Gus finishes, although Gus is f further forward, are exactly the same position physically. And so if we copy this position directly after on frame 41, we're going to have a bit of a stutter where Gus is stationary for too long. So instead what we do is we're going to, we're going to select all the bones and we're going to paste directly over top of frame 40 if that makes sense so we don't repeat that. Uh, anyway, so control C to copy and control V to paste. And let's just see if it worked. There's going to be a little problem here. <laughs> and Gus goes back to the beginning. I'm going to I'm going to on frame 79, I'm going to copy again, control V. And then what we're going to do is we've got three walk cycles. We could do more if we wanted. Um, and what the heck, we'll do one more. Okay, just in case. You always want to do more than you think you might actually need. So what we need to do now is get out of the dope sheet here and we're going to go instead to the graph editor. And what we want to do is have a look at which one of these graphs is causing the problem. And it's pretty easy to see. This one's rising and then suddenly falls. That's got to be the one that has the motion that we would like to correct. So what we'll do is we're going to go like this and I'm just going to see if I can uh, hide. Maybe I'll get lucky here. It's going to be off the route. Let's try the Z locate. Ah, I got lucky. It's the third one down. So what we'll do is we're going to hide all the bones and we'll just make that one appear. That should have hidden them all. What happened? There we go. Try that. And then we'll just make that Z bone appear. So we're only working with a single bone. Shift middle mouse. We can zoom in a little bit if we want. Uh, actually, we'll zoom out a bit because we want to change the scale on this. And what I'm going to do is hit the A key twice. So we deselect all the points. Then I'm going to use the B key and I'm going to drag it over top of all except for the first and last uh, of the vertices here, of the key points. So hit X, so we're going to delete the keyframes. And now what we've got is we have a steady forward motion. But remember, this is the forward distance uh, that would be equivalent to a single step. We did three or four steps, right? So we need to move it four times that distance. It's up to about, what is that, six times four. We need to go up to 24. So we need to scale this back or move this down a bit and simply drag this up, grab it, and drag it up to 24. We can, I can see there's going to be another problem here. Okay, we'll try it up there. And that's it. It slowly tapers off. We don't want that. We hit the V key with that point selected, and we turn this into a vector angle. And so it's a sharp angle. That's how we actually want this curve to be. It's not really a curve. Select the point down here at the bottom uh, and hit V again for vector. And with any luck, we've solved the problem. So let's just see. And that's not too bad. That's not bad at all, except for that we lost Gus. Uh, so uh, we better save this. And that should be all for now. And with that, we'll get Gus to give a little wave here. And <laughs> that's a pretty lousy wave. There we go. That's better. Over and out.